Welcome to Twisted Tendrils, the podcast where we give horrific writing advice. I am your host, Laura Nash. Welcome to Twisted Tendrils, Horrific Writing Advice, Episode 2. In this episode, we will go over ways to make your writing more atmospheric, how to pull your reader into the warped worlds alongside your character, where the environment affects the reader as much as it does the main character. First off, what is atmosphere in writing? You're not photographing a mountain shrouded in morning fog. You're painting a picture with words. I believe atmosphere is the unique feel of a world achieved through descriptions. Is your mountain in fog a blissful retreat to find your inner peace once you ascend to its summit? Or is it Mount Doom from which all evil has emanated, scorching hot lava churning in its center? Even without spending paragraphs waxing poetic about the misty hill, we can give off the vibe through word choice in a few sentences. I have a thesis. If your point of view characters can't sense something, the reader doesn't need to use their limited energy to try and experience it in their imagination. I have a limited number of spoons of energy to work with in a day, a limited amount of words to use while keeping up my pacing. I don't need to use them up describing extraneous details even my characters don't think are important enough to notice. And yet, I want to immerse my reader in the vivid world of the book. How do I do this? Describing the environment, characters, and creatures with words specific to the character's outlook on life and the situation is an invaluable tool. If something interacts with the character, describe it. If it's off in the distance, outside of the character's immediate attention, leave it out. Let me illustrate this with a passage described through basic description and then two characters' illustrated points of view. I walked into the ghost town. Short and to the point, but not much flavor going on here. How does the main character feel about the town? Are they anxious? Excited? No idea. It's very vague as well. Harder to picture exactly what the main character is experiencing, letting us be alongside them. Let's go on to the next version. Dust plumed around my booted foot as I took my first step into Twisted Gulch. The ghostly voices of the inhabitants who fled darted between the rickety wooden buildings causing goosebumps to ripple across my bare, sunburnt arms. Sand suspended in the rasping air tarnished my best dress, eating its way into the delicate lace. Are there the ashes of the mysterious departed mixed in? I breathe as quietly and shallowly as possible, creeping my way forward into the first derelict home. How does the main character feel about the ghost town? Anxious? Nervous? You can tell by the description of ghostly voices Goosebumps and rasping air. Her mannerisms of caution despite being uncomfortable and sunburnt. There are more specifics now. The town has a name. Twisted Gulch. The buildings are made of rickety wood, and the home is derelict. We get to know the town is a ghost town without explicitly saying so. Let's see how a different character describes the same town. My black boots creaked as I arrived at Twisted Gulch the town where business had been so good until there was no one left to buy my fine coffins. The familiar streets were dustier than ever now. Those upstanding citizens with gold long since fled to who knew where. I was sure I'd find them. Find them and make coffins once again for a hefty, but surely reasonable sum. I just needed to search for clever clues in the gnarled knots of the woodwork and maybe raid the saloon, just in case. The Undertaker character is not anxious or nervous at all. He knows the town and has hope. Sure, it's a hope for more money in the future, but it's hope nonetheless. We get a sense of his character through his inner thoughts offset with how he sees a town devoid of people. Sometimes I like to describe the setting even more. Here is a piece of flash fiction I wrote based off a Beskinsky painting, aka The Nightmare Artist. It's a cathedral with strange architecture that reminds me of veins. It's all shrouded in orange haze. 
I pulled from that to shape the environment I've set this story in. My feet drag along the dirt road, sharp rocks tearing at my translucent skin. The river of the recently discovered color red trailed in my heels wake, the smell enough to make my stomach roil. A clear way for the dogs to track me down, if they should ever make it this far into the desolate realm. Orange haze engulfs me as the towers of the abandoned city of cathedrals winks on the horizon. My final resting place. My tomb of splendor. Between the rugged cracks of the baked forsaken land, pulsing veins pull lifeblood towards the city even death could not kill. Veins that bulge crimson and thick, the only sign of life within miles. It's your fault. You brought color into our world. Color. Differences. War. I grimace as the sand suspended in the dry air grits in my teeth. I deserve it. The taste of the ashes, my fellow comrades, taint my tongue. Coat it with my regret. Grenard. Samwin. Elizabeth. Forward I trudge, no longer looking forward to my demise. What will they say when they see me in the spirit plane? Unwelcome. That's what I'll be. Banished. Again. At last I arrive, the looming towers of the organic cathedrals casting long shadows cutting through the auburn atmosphere, casting my thin body in the pale lilac of dead lips. My future. These paragraphs are describing my character walking through the desert to an abandoned city. The obsession with color is warranted since he has just recently gained the ability to see them. I could describe the sounds about him, but instead chose to focus on the new to him and different from our world visuals, topping off with the gritty texture of sand and teeth to round it out with something we can relate to. He's not walking, he's trudging, lost in a negative thought spiral. He's not just in a sandy environment, but a desolate realm where veins pulse in the cracks of the baked earth. Now you might be thinking, that's cool and all, but what if he's not in a fantasy world? but a contemporary or historical. My dear friends, the same things apply. Is the leaning school building propped up by overbearing debt of the students, or their collective naive hopes and dreams? Or maybe it's just too stubborn to comply with the laws of gravity and nature, surviving out of pure spite. Similes, metaphors, and personifications are great tools to employ when infusing atmosphere into your descriptions. Is the main character a fashion designer who first notices the cut, colors, and textures of clothing? Then will take in the character's face and state of emotion after, but only if they deem them worthy of attention? Is the story set in Victorian London, where the gas lamps are glowing golden halos suspended in the fog, the sound of carriages on cobblestones rhythmic and possibly following you into the night? Is the killer stalking women with soft, perfumed hair, that remind him of his mother who left him for a man. He might fixate on the victim's motherly aspects or traits similar to his own traitorous mother he still longs for. Make your word choices be what the character would use, not how you yourself are accustomed to. This can also help you get out of description ruts because you are describing through other people's eyes and experiences. If you're not sure how others would describe things, read books and watch TV with various POVs. Ask someone to describe something similar to what you're writing, but in their own words. A video clip, a picture, whatever you need to show them to get their opinion. Pay attention to the words they select and the tone they paint. You might even make a word bank of descriptors, verbs, and other phrases specific characters may use based off their life experiences and outlook. An ancient jaded vampire's vocabulary is different from a modern teen's repertoire. The last thing I'll mention is weather. Is it sympathetic? Raining while your character is crying? Or is it contrasting? A cheery spring morning with happy singing birds at a funeral. Sometimes contrasting can be a great way to have your character despise the world for not understanding their pain. Lament for nature not sharing their personal joy. Or other emotions. Are the main characters at odds with the world or in sync? So that's a quick look at writing atmosphere using descriptions to pull us into the world with the POV character, focusing on what the main character is focusing on, and leaving out the rest. I'll do an episode on writing with the senses later on. Next up is anthropomorphism and other techniques for making your writing impactful. And until next time, keep your writing spooky. You have been listening to Twisted Tendrils, horrific writing advice.
by Laura Nettles.